Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching with your daily devotion for what? October the 15th. Oh man, that was a good throw. That was just a totally awesome throw. I'm so into that paper flying, I know. I, and I said I wasn't ever going to talk about it, but listen, I regress. I mean, that that thing just flew like this, and you can't see it, but it went like this all the way over there. It was just like the Holy Spirit was moving it. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe it was the wind, but the wind is the Holy Spirit. It's a metaphor in the Bible. It's all free stuff today, guys. Hey, listen, I know, I know. You're like, Matt, you're rattling on again. That seems to be something that's going from one day to the next, but we're going to roll with it, okay? Because we're where? Yeah, you said it. We're in the man cave. Hey, listen, we're going to be in Luke chapter 22. We're going to start with verse 35. And I love this text because I'm always getting emails. I'm always getting questions. Okay. And this text is referring to the sovereignty of God. Okay. And you protecting yourself. Okay. Meaning this, Matt, can, can, can I protect myself? What is God's will? Uh, uh, because here's the thing. The Bible says, turn the other cheek. True. It does say that, but God's not going to have you be a punching bag, guys. And I want you to get this down in your mind, because if you don't understand God's word, you may be abused. And, you know, I'm like, and I know there's someone out there saying, Matt, no one is going to abuse me. All right, partner, you're in Christ. Say, listen to the text. It'll make sense. Okay. He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is talking about this. And he said unto them, who's, who's, who's he talking to? And remember, again, when we're looking at these stories, who's speaking? Who's the audience? Okay, it's Jesus, and he's talking to his disciples, okay? His disciples have been with him, what? Three years now, okay? Jesus says to his disciples, and he said to them, When I sent you without purse and without money and shoes, did you lack anything? Meaning God told them this, I sent you out the first time. I told you, you don't need to bring money. You don't even need sandals, okay? You just need me. Go out. Share the gospel. Did you need anything? And the answer was absolutely no. Meaning this, God was with them. God's on earth, God's with them. His spirit is resting upon those individuals. They didn't need anything. Whatever they lacked, God would give them. Do you understand? That's what Jesus was saying. But then there's a transition here in verse 36. Then he said unto them, But now, watch this very carefully. He that hath a purse or money, let him take it, and likewise his script. And if he has no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one. What is this saying? Is Jesus saying, go buy a Glock? I mean, I need to know. No. What Jesus is saying is this, be wise. In life, you need money, right? Because if, let's say I'm driving down the road. I can't just walk into 7-Eleven or a grocery store and say, hey, I want a Coke. Give me a Coke. I'm a child of the living God. I wish it really worked like that. It does. In heaven, you don't need money in heaven. The streets are made of gold and everything you need is supplied for you. God has given you everything you need here, but it requires what? An exchange. How do I do that? I work. When I work, I get a paycheck. I keep some of it in my pocket. I give some to the church. I save some. I use some for bills, okay? When I go to the store, I give them money and I get my Coke. Or in my case, I go to get a burger and I give them money. Are you with me? He's saying be wise. You're going to need money in life. So don't spend your whole paycheck on something stupid, okay? Give unto Caesar what is Caesar. Give unto God what is God's. First of all, whose money is it in the first place? It's God's. Your whole paycheck because everything belongs to him. You're not taking anything to heaven. But he gives you the ability to gain wealth. That's what scripture tells us. So he's given you a job, okay, or some way you've got resources. Give him his due fair share. What is he asking? 50%? He's not asking for 50%. 60%? No. It's all his. What is he asking for? 70%? No. No. 10%. Give him the first 10%. It's called first fruits. When you do, you're blessed. He will multiply the 90%. I'll get off that because some of you have a real issue. You have an issue because you're going to a church that's not being what? They're not living in righteousness and they're not being godly and they're spending the money in the wrong way. So you really have an issue. The problem's with you. It's not with the church. You're like, how's the problem with me? You're in the wrong church. Okay, if you are going to a church that's living by the biblical example of scripture, okay, and you give the tithe, you would feel good about yourself. But once you release that money, it's God's. God will reward you regardless of what they do with it. But some of you have issues with churches. Churches aren't perfect just like people aren't perfect, okay? God's saying this. When you go, have a few bucks in your pocket in case you get a flat tire. Smart. I can get my tire fixed. I can call a tow truck. Do the things that you know to do. Jesus isn't going to be with them to get them out of the hole, okay? His Spirit's going to be with them, but the Spirit's going to give us wisdom to live daily life, okay? So he says, hey, is it smart for you to walk around without shoes? Uh, I don't know. Bam! Ah, I broke my foot! No! Put some shoes on. Why? It protects your feet. It keeps them from getting hurt. Wisdom. Jesus says this, have a sword. What does that mean? It means be smart. 
Look it. Be smart. Be wise. God's telling us to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. During that day, there were thieves all over the place. And oftentimes, three or four would be hiding in a ditch. When you're walking down the road, they would jump you. Okay? What about, what about the sword? What's the deal with the sword? And again, you know what I'm saying? Those were treacherous times. People were robbing you, killing you, taking everything you had. Let's say someone jumps out right now while I'm doing the man cave. They, they hear me and I'm preaching to God. They think, oh man, he's going to be an easy score. I'm going to get his iPad, his camera. I'm going to get him. And then I pull out my Glock and I put two right by his ear where he can hear the hum of the bullet. Whoo, whoo. What's that going to do? Do I want to kill that guy? No, I don't want to kill him. What is he? He's lost because he's robbing me. What does that mean? He doesn't have Christ. Okay. I, I want to live and let live, but I also realize this. I have a responsibility to my family to protect them, okay? God has allowed this situation. How am I going to act in this situation? There are times if it's a home invasion, okay, and there's two or three people, guess what? You're going to meet Jesus today. And you're like, what, what do you mean? God's not going to have you be some guy's punching bag. God doesn't want someone raping your wife and robbing you and hurting you and killing you. He has no problem with you defending yourself, okay? But he wants you to what? Use wisdom, okay? W what can you do to safeguard? guard your house so that person could never get into the house. You have to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. And I know there's a, a there's someone out there saying, well, Matt, what about the Ten Commandments? Thou shall not kill. You're right. But that's not what it says in the original language. It says thou shall not murder, which means premeditation, okay? You weren't planning while you were watching a movie with your family, someone kicking in the door and trying to kill you and rob you, okay? So th it's not murder. It's self-defense. That's what God's saying. You need to pray about in this area of your life, is this something God would have me to do? Would God have me to give pepper spray? Okay, listen, there's pepper spray and bear spray. It will take a 250 pound man ripped from head to toe on meth down. Okay, because it's going to swell up his glands and his eyes and his nose. And within 15 seconds, he's on the ground. And they got these huge home canisters. Is that right for you? question is this, do I ever want to hurt someone? The answer, the answer is no. Live and let live. But here's the thing. Is there something about pointing it at a person, giving a, a warning shot, shooting one over the bow that's going to make him think twice? I'm not fooling with you, partner. God told us right up front, it was going to, in the last days, it was going to be as the days of Noah. Okay, and am I saying, am I an advocate for you buying a gun? No, I'm an advocate for you getting on your hands and knees and praying to God about every area of your life and dedicating your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and asking Him to lead you, asking Him to guide you. That's what I'm saying, okay? But but I'm not going to put my head in the sand and think that I don't live in a fallen world that's not corrupt and there's not evil people out there, okay, and people who would like to hurt me and take my life and hurt my family. I realize these things. So guys, Jesus realized these things. Jesus has been with them every single day, protecting them, teaching them, providing for them. And he's saying this, hey, you didn't need shoes, right? No, Lord, we didn't need shoes. You didn't need any money, right? You didn't need a sword, right? You need them now. Why? Do I need to use the sword? No. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is being betrayed by Judas, it's funny. Who pulls out a sword? Peter does. Peter grabs a sword, whacks off this guy's ear. That's not God's way. God puts his hands on the guy, okay, and he heals. He puts his ear back on, okay? It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, thus saith the Lord. So God's going to guide us. He's going to lead us. But we need to be able to be in right relationship with God so we can hear the still, small voice to avoid certain areas, certain situations, and certain places, okay? God's going to lead us and guide us. There are things that we could do years ago that we just can't do now. But that's why when Jesus ascended unto the heaven, the Holy Spirit came down to lead us in a life of victory but there's nothing wrong with wearing shoes would you agree yeah man I agree there's nothing wrong with having money to go to the grocery store man I totally agree and here's the thing if a person prays they have a peace about it there's nothing wrong with fortifying themselves with a firearm or with some kind of self-defense mechanism that's going to keep them out of harm's way and I know there's people out there that say Matt I believe in the sovereignty of God I do too. I believe in the providence of God. I do too. I know nothing can happen to me unless God allows that to happen yes, to I me. I totally believe. You got the wrong cat if you're thinking I don't believe in the sovereignty of God. God's sovereignty rules over all. That's Psalm 103. But if I go down to the next verse, verse 37, Jesus says this, I'm among the transgressors. See, he's, he's, he's telling you right up front, I'm among people who aren't like-minded, who are bent on destruction, who are bent on evil, who are bent on taking life. 
I want you as my children to take the precautions, okay, that you need to take to keep those type of people away from you. He's not telling you to be the antagonist, to bring the fight to them, but he's saying this, be ready, always ready, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. And again, Everything I'm asking you to do is just common sense. But when Jesus is telling his disciples, here's the thing. He's telling them that, hey, I'm going to go to heaven. The Spirit's going to come down here. My Spirit's going to lead you and guide you. So every decision I make daily is always filtered through the Holy Spirit. He is telling me what to do and what not to do. For some people, he may have you to get a firearm. Other people, he says, you don't need it, depending on where you live. Friends, I can't tell you that, but I get a lot of questions that people feel guilty, like they're sinning against God, okay, like they're not not trusting God. Here's the thing, that firearm, watch this, that mace, that pepper spray, the sword, th that is a resource. Are you with me? That's just a resource. He's my source. My source may tell me to use a resource. God may use cameras around your house. He may have you put bars up. I, I don't know what he's asking you to do to safeguard you and your family, but here's the thing. We're in the man cave, and so many of you are married. Okay, and here's the thing. You're head of household. It's your job to safeguard your family one way or another, and you can seek guidance from the Holy Spirit. Things that I mentioned, the resources that God may have you to use. If I'm looking at this house and it has no cameras, and I look at this one and it has cameras, I'm not going in that yard. Guess what? Was that smart? It absolutely was smart. When I'm trying to bang on the door and get into your house, and then I hear this, ch -ch -ch, guess what? He's not getting in, okay? Uh, unless he's just downright crazy, okay? And then again, he's going to meet Jesus. I hope he's in right relationship with him, and obviously he's not, okay? I'm sending him to Jesus before he's going to hurt me and my family. Are, are you with me on this things? All the things or resources. He's my source. He will lead me and guide me into everything, okay? But again, I don't want to overpower someone unless it's necessary. Meaning this, if it's just someone stupid, they're drunk, they're trying to get money for drugs, do I need to really take a life? And the answer is absolutely not, okay? We have to use wisdom in everything that we are doing. And that's what the text means. It's, it's more of a wisdom thing. Rely on God's spirit. Rely. But God is telling you up front, we're in tough days. He's telling the disciples, okay? Hey, the times you're living, it's, it's going to be likened unto the days of Noah very soon. And here's the thing. Just a few years after this was the destruction, okay, of Israel. I, I guess what I'm really trying to tell you is this. Don't move forward ignorantly of God's word. And there are just so many people that just think certain things are right and certain things are wrong. But they don't understand the mind of God. You see what I'm saying? God doesn't want you being beat down or someone taking advantage and hurting you and your family. You're no super Christian by someone beating you up. Are you kidding me? That's not what that text says. Turn the other cheek. No, that turn the other cheek isn't so much someone hitting you as someone verbally assaulting you. I need you to understand that, okay? It, turning the other cheek is someone who jams you, you know what I'm saying? And, and instead of you lashing out with your mouth, and I know all all of you can because you're in the man cave. At one time we had that ability. Now we're in Christ. Now we're in Christ. So we're not doing that anymore. You got me? So someone verbally assaults me. I turn the other cheek. I take it. They're not hurting me. They couldn't do that. Hurt people, hurt people. I realize they're not where they need to be with my God. One day I pray that they get where they need to be and then they'll apologize, okay? And here's the thing, they'll have to turn the other cheek. You understand what I'm saying? That's not for you to take a beating and think, oh, I'm so super Christian, that guy beat the pulp out of me, but I held my own, God bless you as you're beating me. Someone tries to beat me down, let me tell you what's gonna happen. I can't tell you what's gonna happen because I'm gonna follow the leading of the Spirit of God and He will direct my steps. Hi right, guys, I'm giving you all these principles. I hope you're applying them to your life and realize this, that your best days lie ahead with the Lord. Follow His leading. Don't go through life half-cocked because here's the thing, eventually what happens is you shoot off your toe or you get in trouble with someone else and we just don't wanna do that. Live and let live. Be a man of peace. That's the sandals of peace, okay? Moving forward in victory with the Lord, okay? But I wanna hear His voice in every, in every situation. All right? Boom. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave.